this morning for you. And I'm excited for what God is going to do in our midst. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 14. We'll be in verse 16 through 23. We'll have it on the screens for you as well. And the Bible says, and Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I want to talk to you this morning on the third week of our installment of being that church. I want to talk to you today about advancing, advancing. Advancing the gospel to reach the lost in unique and creative ways. Let us pray. Father, we just pray again a continuation and a move of your spirit. I pray that you would open our hearts, minds, and souls this morning to be receptive to your will, not mine. Lord, I ask that you would remove me, God, but just use me, God, in your way, that your will be fulfilled. And Father, we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We continue our journey on being that church. We talked last week about being highly visible. We might have sung this little light of mine. We will not repeat that. <laughs> but I felt all week a challenging word for us. The foundation has been laid, and I feel in my heart that this morning is a day of response. It's a day of response to this challenge, to be advancing as a church, to be advancing. Let's lay a foundation for that. To advance is to move forward, typically in a purposeful way. So we today are to advance the gospel in unique and creative ways, but in a purposeful way, in a purposeful way. It's exciting to know that God has a plan and a purpose for us to be that church. We get to do it. We get to be that church. That is our mindset, and that is the challenge to get in your heart this morning, to be involved in the work here. It's not a we have to, but we, we get to. We get to do it. We get to be a part of that church that's transforming your experience through powerful worship and preaching of God's word. We're that church that gets to be highly visible beyond these four walls, and we are that church that's going to advance the gospel in unique and creative ways to reach the lost. Amen? We are that church that's what God's calling us to do that's who we are that is our mantra that is our mission to be that church so now I feel we're ready for the word so let's jump into this challenging message today see the verse 17 says at the time of the banquet he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited come for everything is now ready it starts with an invitation God is giving you an invitation right now as I speak. He was inviting you through the songs that were being sung. We have an invitation to be that church. Visitors, if you're here with us today, we thank you for coming. You are being invited to join and be a part of that church. And that church that's going to purposefully move forward to advance the gospel. So yes, this is the invitation. It's going forward. An invitation is challenging because, see, you have to respond to the invitation. But I love what the text said. It said, everything is now ready. So that means that all the preparation had been done. And I believe that where we are as a church, everything is now ready. 
It's ready to advance. It's ready to move forward. There's been a lot of preparation and work that got us to this place. Just like there had been a lot of work and preparation for that banquet that Jesus was talking about in this parable. There was preparation and there's seasons of preparation. But then those seasons of preparation move us into action. And purposeful action is where we're moving to. Purposeful action is where we're moving. And today is the day I pray that you get something planted inside of you that won't sit still anymore. I pray today that there's a seed that's already been planted and it's going to bust through the ground. Oh, I feel that in my spirit this morning. See, I believe somebody's been coming to church here for quite some time and there's been a word that's been sowed into your heart. It could have been years ago. It could have been a month ago. It could have been last week. But when you put a seed in the ground, you got to water it. You got to nurture it. And the next thing you know, it does its thing and it sprouts up out of the ground. Today could be the day that your seed sprouts out of the ground to be who you've been planted to be. Because see, at first you're a seed, but then once it takes root, oh my God, once it takes root, then it comes up out the ground and you can't hold it back anymore because once you break through, there's no stopping you. You're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to be who God called you to be. My God. This morning, I want to declare that word for you today, just as it says in Psalms 118, verse 24 through 26. It says, the Lord has done it this very day. Hmm. This very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from the house of the Lord. We bless you. Oh, today is your day. Today is your day. The Bible also says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Why wait for yesterday's tomorrow? It's already here. It's called today. Oh, come on, somebody. It's already here. It's today. (laughs) See, the text says God has an invitation for success for you today. He's already done it. So rejoice today. I feel like so many times it's freeing to give God a shout of praise. And you want to know why? I get excited. You want to know why? I have a fire inside of me because I listened to the lies for too long. It held me back for too long. And if I can get excited and passionate about some sporting event or some concert or somebody else, I believe I can get excited about the one who set me free. So why don't you go ahead and rejoice today for what he's done and go ahead and let the devil know I'm here to be a part of that church that's going to advance the gospel and do what he's called us to do. That is who I'm going to be today. Today is the day. Come on, somebody. Hmm. (laughs) All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Because see, now here's where the challenge comes forth. Because see, with any invitations required an answer, an invitation to say yes or no. So what has your response been to God calling you to play your part in advancing the gospel? What has been your part that you have been called to do to advance the gospel? What's been your response to that? Let's look at the text. Verse 18 through 21. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five oxen and I'm on my way to go try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I just, I can't come. And a servant came back to his master. So the invitation went out and the excuses came in. Lord, help me here because this is the challenge for us, church. What excuses have you been falling back on that has kept you from taking your seat at the table, per se? What's been your excuses for taking your seat at the table? God's got a seat for you. What's been your excuse for not taking your seat at the table? (laughs) See, the preparation was made. The preparation was there. And just like in the parable, there's typical reasons to why we say no. See, in the parable, he said, I bought a field, so I must go. And so many times you hear, I got to go somewhere. I got to go do this. Or just like in the parable, he said, I have new oxen. I'm on my way to go try it out. I've got something else to do. Hello, somebody. Or I love this one. I just got married and I can't come. I just, I can't make it. I just can't make it. Praise the Lord. If you're married, you need to make it. All the couples in the house said amen. Oh, we just got real, yep. Yeah. We're going to have fun in church. We will always have fun in church. A little humor. But you need to make it. You got to be here, right? You got to be here. 
Let me remind you of something this morning. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, For God's gifts and calling are irre- irrevocable. The gifts and calling God has for you are something that cannot be changed or reversed. If you look up that definition, it cannot be changed or reversed. So stop making excuses today. Every excuse is another means to not be purposeful in moving forward, but it's being purposeful to not move at all. Oh, I love this quote, y'all. Benjamin Franklin said, He that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. (laughs) Come on, Ben Franklin, that preach right there. That preach right there. Let me say it again because you might want to write it down. Maybe you need to put this on your refrigerator, put it on your mirror. And not from me, but from Ben Franklin, you know, the Benjamins, that guy. Yeah, he said that he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. What excuses are you making? This came to my heart and my mind as I was preparing and studying and praying. This is from me, your pastor. Excuses give birth to complacency. Complacency turns to being stagnant. If anybody knows anything about being stagnant, you come up on some stagnant water, it's pretty gross. It stinks. It's got stuff growing in it. It's dirty. Because it's not moving. It's stagnant. It's still. It's not moving. So God is saying, don't become complacent through your excuses because then you become stagnant. You become stagnant in your walk of faith. You become stagnant in your hope, stagnant in your joy, stagnant in every aspect of your life. He said, no, stop making excuses and make me number one so that you can move purposely forward and be who I've called you to be because when you move and you advance, it just starts flowing and keeps moving. Let me ask you this question. The Bible says that we should look into the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Would you agree? It's in the Word. So let me ask you some questions. Let's ask the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Let's ask him some questions about excuses. Did Jesus have an excuse when he was taking the stripes on his back for your healing? Did Jesus have an excuse when he got on the cross and died for your sins? Did he have an excuse? Did he have an excuse to stay in the tomb and just lay there? Did he have an excuse? Did he? He didn't have an excuse. He didn't have an excuse. He wasn't going to allow an excuse to take root because of the mission that he was called to do. And because of what he fulfilled and what he did, deliverance came. Freedom came. Healing came. Joy came. Healing. Resurrecting power came. And you know what? When you move and you shake and you tear everything out in front of you that's trying to keep you where you are, every excuse out of the way, you too have the ability to bind what is holding back and loose what should be free by the power and authority of Almighty God that's inside of you when you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. That same power that rose him up out of the grave. The same one that let him take the stripes on his back. The same one that held him up on the cross. That same power, that same spirit, that same might is the same spirit that's inside of you and inside of me, child of God. Quit making excuses to hold it back. But let it rise up and come up out of you and be who you've been called to be today. Mm. So you want to talk about excuses. Where is God on your priority list? Stop the excuses. Shift your priorities. Making serving him should be number one. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about serving him. Where is God on your priority list? Let me remind you what a Revelation chapter 3 says, verses 15 and 16. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. (laughs) Know what that is? Being lukewarm? Busy and ineffective. Busy but ineffective. 
busy but ineffective. Full calendar, ineffective. Full of lists to do, ineffective. God's saying, don't be lukewarm in your service to me. I wish you'd be hot or I wish you'd be cold. But because you're in the middle, you're just busy and ineffective. And he's challenged us to not be busy but be effective in who we've been called to be. That means we have to advance. We have to move purposefully, moving forward. But see, here's where it starts getting better, church. Because as you go down and you see in verse 19 through 22, it says, to whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. He loves you today. That's why he tapped me on my heart to send this message to you. Do you think it's comfortable for me to stand up here and talk to you about excuses? No. But I got to do it. Because he sent me on a mission. And the mission doesn't just end at leaving you at excuses, but to tell you how you can move to victory. Because here it says, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. He's here right now. He's standing at the door of your heart knocking. So if anyone hears my voice, open the door. He says, I will come in and eat with you. That person and they with me. To the one who is victorious. You're about to get your victory right now. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Church, he's telling us today, if we will get up and move and be victorious, just like he was victorious, we stop the excuses, we advance the gospel, guess what? We get to take our seat next to him on the throne. We get to take our seat at the table that he's called for us to fill. Yeah, see, no more excuses. We have to execute. The time clock is running down. It's been going down every day. We're wasting time. No excuses, just execute. And then we get to it, the execution. Verse 21, the servant came back and reported to his master. The owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets, the alleys of the town, bring the poor, bring the crippled, bring the blind, and bring the lame. He said, go get the ones that wouldn't come on their own. Go get the ones you can help come. Go get the ones that you can reach out and help come. The servant executed what he was told to do. It was a simple strategy. Go and bring. Go and bring. He said, go and bring. He said, go get the blind, go get the lame and bring them. He said, I've got a seat for them at my table. I've got a banquet that has been prepared. There's been a work done to lay down the foundation of what this church is to do. God's saying, I've got the table set. Pastor, you need to go and bring some people who need to come. You need to go and bring some people who need to come. You need to go and bring some people who need to come and take a seat. Take a seat, 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 take a seat. Go and bring, go and bring, go and bring, go and bring. He told me to 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 go and bring. So we got to go. We got to bring them. We got to go. We got to bring them. We got to go. Now, they wouldn't have come if I didn't go get them. They wouldn't have come if I didn't go get them. Y'all listen to this. I told you earlier that there was a seat at the table for you. Nobody came. Because you thought, oh, he just sat the table there for looks. He's going to do another one of them analogies. He's going to do another one of those illustrations. But the table was open the whole time, and you just sat there. Lord, help me. It ain't nothing but love. But I'm here to challenge this church. The table's been open the whole service. The table was sitting here since last night. The seats have been open at the table. And God's saying, go and bring. Go and bring. And you know what? The servant went and he grabbed and he brought. But guess what? He said, there's still room. There's still room. There's still room. I'm telling somebody this morning, you feel God pulling on your heart and you feel like you should move. There's still room at the table, so why don't you move? There's still room at the table, so why don't you move? There's still room at the table, so why don't you move? Oh, yeah, see, somebody's getting it this morning. <laughs> Come on, church. There's still room at the table. The seats are now full. God said, go and bring them. Then he said, go and compel them to come so that my house can be full. The table is full. The table is full. This is what it's intended to be. Everybody taking their seat at the table. 
This table right here is our church. This is our church. And there's been empty seats for too long. There's been work to be done that's not getting done because the seats are empty. The seats got to be full. That takes you. That takes you. I didn't fill every seat. The youth pastor didn't fill every seat. The praise and worship team didn't fill every seat. The church fills the seats. The church fills the seats. Yeah, you, that church, that church, that church, advancing, moving forward purposely. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> Thank you. Give them a hand. They didn't know they were going to do that. Come play me some stopping music. Come play me some stopping music. See? See something with me, okay? Verse 22 through 23 says, The servant said, What you ordered has been done, but there is still room. The master told his servant, Go out to the roads, the country lanes, and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. If you look up what compel means, there's similar words, and it says to press, to push, to urge. God's urging somebody today to move from excuse and complacency to here I am. Some of you may say, I can't physically do it, but you can support the church in other ways through your prayers, through your giving, amen, through your intercession. Some of you are physically able to do more than others. But you've took a seat at the wrong seat. God said, come sit at my table. He said, compel them. Because look, 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 look. So we had a table with some chairs. And we talked about there's room at the table. Right? There's room at the table. I still have room at my table. But I want you to look to your left and to your right. Do you have an empty seat beside you? Some have more than others. Compel them to come, he said. Urge them to come, he said. Press them to come, he said. There's a seat beside you that represents a heart, a soul, and a life that needs to come and be in his house. Not so that we can just be a full church, but so that we can be that church that's advancing the gospel because there's a lost soul that needs to sit in that seat beside you. We need to compel them. We need to urge them. We need to go out and give them what God's truth says. That's what he's done in your life and in my life. All I've been, doing, been sent to do is be the servant to give you the message to go and bring. So go and bring them. Go and bring them. Go and bring them. Go and bring them so that his house can be full. Amen? So his house can be full. Would you stand? Because the challenge doesn't just stop there. If you look in Matthew chapter 14, there's a similar parable that's taught about this banquet. And you know how it ends in Matthew? It says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are are chosen. Chosen, if you look at the root word, is choice, choose. The calling goes out, but few choose to come. So I'm giving you an opportunity this morning because I feel it in my heart. God laid it on my heart to challenge you. Last week we talked about walking into calling, but calling is more than just seeing it, but it's choosing it. You've been selected to be the best. That's what chosen means. Selected to be the best. So God is choosing some people today, but will you choose him? Will you choose him to take your seat at the table? Will you choose him to advance the gospel in unique ways, which means you share your testimony at work, you don't hide it under a box? Will you choose him? The one who called you out of darkness into light? I believe it right now as they start singing. God's already been moving. He's already been pulling. He's already tugging on heartstrings. He's looking for you. He said, I've called you. He said, I've stand at the door and I've knocked and I've knocked and I've knocked. Will you let me in? Let him in today. Let him in today. Let him in today. Let him in today. Move, church. 
Move, church. You feel it in your heart? He's calling you. He wants you to choose him. So choose him this morning. Move for him today. No more excuses. No more complacency. But move today, believing that he is going to use you in a great and mighty way. Move today, church. This is who you are. You are the Lord. the one who lights my way and in the dark nights you will lead me yes this is who you are so
church. For the joy. <laughs> See, the Bible says that all of heaven shouts over one who repents. And one this morning made that decision today. <laughs> so let's give, let's give a shout of praise to God who reached down and saved someone this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up, God, in this place. We lift you up. Lift it up, church. So lift it up. Lift it up.